All right. Today's episode, we are jumping into the spiritual side of things with Dr. Allison J. K. Um, she's an award-winning number one international best-selling author and the founder of the Bi- Vibrational Upgrade System. She's an experienced subtle energies practitioner and natural healer with a holistic approach toward helping others um, thrive in their mind, body, and spirit. Uh, this is reinforced by her 10 years in Asia studying subtle energies and ancient wisdom. With 20 plus years working in in teaching yoga, meditation, energy medicine, mind, body, fitness, longevity, and holistic health with a specialized focus on the chakra system. Dr. Allison brings a unique perspective that facilitates massive change. In this episode, I got all sorts of real with some of the spiritual awakening that I'm going through (laughs) right now. Um, We joked halfway through that you guys were just kind of listening in on my private session with Dr. K. I've got some some stuff going on. that has been kind of interesting. So I was just straight up asking her. Um, we, we jumped all up into the, I, well, I don't know if I want to call it woo woo. <laughs> Some people might call it woo woo. I'm just starting to call it reality now, <laughs> put it that way. But it's, yeah, super interesting. If you're into um, energy healing and more of the metaphysical, you're going to like this episode. Um, make sure you check the show notes for links to um, her website and um, Instagram. So it's Allison J, the letter J K dot com. And um, also on Instagram, it's Dr. Allison with one L on both of those, the letter J K K A Y. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. Here is Dr. Allison K. Okay. Before we jump into the show, I've got a special announcement real quick, and it is about my higher retreats. We are finally rolling on this. This is a project that's been in the work for two years for me, and we are finally going. Our first higher retreat is going to be in April in Zion's National Park. I don't know if you've ever been to Zion, but oh man, it's in Southern Utah. It is incredible. Check out my Instagram for pictures if you haven't seen. It is just like one of the most magical places in the world. People come from all over the world to see this place. Um, So we are going to be doing it there April 21st through 24th, 2022. And I wanted to let you guys know we are still in our early bird pricing right now. Um, We sold a lot of it. We filled more than half the retreat in our pre-sale, but we still have one shared room left. So if you want to come with somebody and save some money, jump on that. Um, I am doing this with Be The Wellness. They are helping me put on this retreat. Be The Wellness is amazing. They are like my dream end goal of all retreats. And they have decided to help other people like me put on retreats. So it's going to be phenomenal. They're award-winning retreat um, hosts. And yeah, it's it's going to be good. So you have to go to their website. It's going to be Be The Wellness. So B-E-E. Make sure you follow them on Instagram, by the way, also. But B-E-E, The Wellness, be the wellness.com slash experiences slash hire. All of the details are there. You have pricing. Um, you can register right there on the website. All of the schedule, all of the people who are coming. We have a shaman coming to do a fire ceremony the first night. There's an amazing yoga, meditation, breath work facilitator. Catherine Dixon, who is like, I don't know what to call her, my like spiritual guide in life. <laughs> um, she is facilitates the work of Byron Katie and she has an episode here on Inside Out Health. I would highly suggest listening to that. She is a life changer. She's going to be facilitating um, two days at the retreat. So I'm so excited to have Catherine coming. She's like my secret weapon. She's amazing. So um, yeah, all the details are on that website. Go check it out. Take advantage of the early bird pricing we have going um, for the next uh, week and a half. So that will end on, I guess maybe it's a little less than that by the time you hear this. That ends on August 8th at 8 p.m. So 888, okay? August 8th at 8 p.m. Mountain Time is when the early bird pricing ends. So if you want to get in on that, get in on that now. Um, and yeah, if this is something that's pinging, if you feel like you need a reset, connect to nature, connect with like-minded people, take a look inside at what you got going on and leave with some tools on how to control your stress response and challenge your stressful thoughts and find out what might be going on inside of you that you're just not seeing. This is going to be amazing. We have a private chef coming, all gourmet paleo meals. It's going to be incredible. So um, yeah, check that out. Bethewellness.com slash experiences slash hire. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. 
So, um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test. There's no way to know. And you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of, exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios, right? So, um, yeah, take advantage of it, guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting, and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount on to you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. All right, guys. So I have Dr. K with me and I thought, you know what? I thought this would be a fun time to kind of take you guys along some of my own spiritual journey. I know if you're following, if you've been following me on Instagram for a while, you've probably caught the drift that there's a lot more spiritual going on besides just health and fitness in my life right now. And many of you know that I'm very much a proponent of plant medicines and healing work and shamanic work. And one thing that I personally have been going through that I, I haven't really told anybody except like close friends and family, but I just told Dr. K and she's like, let's get into it is I've, I've, um, for the last couple of years have been noticing like this energy in my hands and immediately my knee jerk, you know, American Terra programming is like, that's weird. No, it's not happening. (laughs) And even though I love the energetic realm and I'm constantly meditating and pulling in and I trust this divine guidance that I live by, I'm like, that is outside of my ability to accept that I keep feeling like this insane amount of energy in my hands, but it's gotten to the point where I can't deny it anymore. And so I'm like seeking, I'm like, okay, what's going on? What is this? You know? And so I thought we could start there. If you don't mind, um, do you have any clues as to what might be going on with this energy that I'm feeling in my hands? (laughs) Yeah. So you know how when a baby's sick, um, and mom or dad soothes the belly with their hand. Yeah. So we all have many chakras at our hands mm. and in our feet mm. and there's healing energy that um, naturally emanates through there, depending on how unblocked you are. And so I have been feeling it in my feet too. Sorry. I just had to interject. So I'm like, yay. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let me do how, so I'm going to contextualize your questions. This is going to be a, sure. about a paragraph or two worth of information. Um, hi everybody. My name is Dr. Allison JK. <laughs> Feel free to call me Dr. Allison. That's what most people do. Okay. Um, and so back in, so I was lived in Asia for 10 years, studying subtle energy and how it works and consciousness. And my certification as an Ashtanga yoga teacher took place in India. I'm a Qigong teacher. I'm also certified personal trainer with a focus on fitness, nutrition, and longevity and tonic herbalism. So Tara, I I know why you're excited to talk with me because I also um, am the founder of vibrational upgrade system that has uh, a combination of the energy medicine background I have, and then the yoga teacher background I have where I've created a system of applied mindfulness to help with permanent behavioral change after applying energy medicine. So I actually even have certification for permanent behavioral or behavioral change specialist. So I say all of that because, um, Thanks. But I say all of that because I just want to help people understand who they're listening to. So -hmm. just a tad. So after the decade in Asia, I came back in 2010 and around, and that was the worst culture shock coming back to American culture Mm -hmm. more than going to any of the foreign cultures. And I've lived all over the world, not just as an expat at different times in my adult life, but this was the longest chunk of time, 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. I came back in the summers, but I was definitely changed. And so um, as I was getting over and it re- this worst culture shock and readjusting to American life again, mm-hmm. Voice America approached me in around 2011 and asked me to do a radio show on the Mayan Galactic Alignment in 2012. And I, on December 21st in 2012, and this is 2011, they're asking me, and I had done nothing in my public facing work 
uh, of my business and platform at, with the Mayan galactic alignment whatsoever. But I had been taking client VIP clients to Mayan ruins in the Yucatan because I live right on the um, Gulf of Mexico, right on the Caribbean. And so uh, I said, let me have 48 hours before I decide. And so sat, listened to my intuition over that time and then got a full body yes and did a radio show weekly where I was interviewing not only specialists from my first book, What If There's Nothing Wrong, that was started out as my dissertation for my PhD that I wrote my last year in Taiwan, looking at the Western medical system, looking at our Western way of thinking after being immersed in this holistic, right, collective system that knows energy trumps matter rather than in the States or the West where right. the physical or the matter trumps energy. So uh-huh. I had my world turned inside out. So wow. I was, I was interviewing specialists who had come up with the, it was out of meetings with the Dalai Lama that happened every other year. The Dalai Lama still does them, meets with Western scientists and neuro uh, mm-hmm. scientists and behavioral specialists and psychologists. And ultimately they began measuring the effects of meditation. So in that, what if there's nothing wrong? First book of mine, I was talking about the science behind what had been developed thus far to measure mm subtle energy, like the energy coming yeah. out of your hands and to yeah. see what happens neurologically and physiologically when we're in, um, like I've had my self measured when I'm giving a healing energy and mm. it's just magnificent what wow. the, the photography, the curling and photography was able to see. So I also, mm. at the same time, got a chance to start bringing on specialists about what December 21st, 2012 meant. And so what I came to find out as well as Fast forward, uh, 2019, I went to some other Mayan ruins and we hired a native guide and I asked him, what do you know about the old paradigm and the new paradigm? And he said, the old one's about destruction, the new one's about construction. So on December 21st, 2012, I actually became one of these specialists as the yoga teacher, the meditation teacher, and the energy medicine specialist on the cruise to Chichen Itza for December 21st, 2012, we got special permission to work with a Mayan shaman right at the pyramids. And the year before I had taken a VIP client there and barefoot at Chichen Itza, nothing was happening under my feet much. That day, December 21st, 2012, my feet were like having lightning bolts shoot up. Wow. Them. And it was such a big deal. There were camera crews from all over the world. And I was seen on TV as far away as Poland, apparently. And what I came to understand is we are in a 20 year time frame from 2012 to 2032. And we have seen basically the crumbling of the old paradigm where anything that's not in alignment, where there's an abuse of power, where there's imbalance between um, material and spiritual, masculine, and feminine, yin, yang, mm-hmm. anything that's out of alignment with the higher divine order of things yeah. has been crumbling, whether it's mm-hmm. financial institutions, educational institutions, healthcare systems, our own interpersonal relationships, or within ourselves. Mm-hmm. So we've just been through a hell of a time, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. So, yeah. and I've been talking about this way, way, way before COVID since 2011. Mm-hmm. And now I perceive intuitively that we're on the bend of now in the creative time, enough has crumbled. So now we're in the building time of it. And so what that requires is us to step into a co-creative role where we recognize that we are creating, in fact, from our consciousness, which then moves energy with our focus. Mm-hmm. And then that energy over time, if it gets moved the same way and with a higher vibration, you can do it quicker into manifestation of the physical. Yeah. And these are, this whole 20 year time is considered a humanity spiritual awakening. Mm-hmm. So I have a free monthly call and I've been fielding people since 2010 coming onto that free monthly call, talking about tinnitus, talking about um, losing fi- uh, somebody to death, a job, divorce, possibly all at the same time. What I have seen is the divine breaking through And if a person isn't opening on their own proactively to engage with more than just their physical body, Mm -hmm. then they are given a crisis where they're forced to. So you may have, some of you listeners may have had some medical diagnosis where you're looking for alternative healing or natural healing because you don't want to do the Western med or you've already tried it and it hasn't helped or you're going through a divorce or bankruptcy and a death of a loved one all at the same time. And you just want some higher level guidance than maybe counseling that where you just go into the story. So all of this has been orchestrated um, from a higher 
perspective, take that mountaintop perspective, which is the picture of my first book, A Woman on Top of a Mountain. I call it nowadays a satellite perspective and the spirit is awakening in all of us. And we will be creating a healthier paradigm moving forward the more we integrate and balance our relationship with the material and the spiritual or our body, fitness and nutrition, Mm -hmm. along with the spiritual component that is actually a part of how healthy our body is and how healthy our mind is. So I know that I approach even my, I call it mind body fitness, that which I do. So when somebody comes to me to lose weight, for example, I don't even talk about the diet or the exercise until I've dealt with primarily it's the third chakra and the root chakra, their relationship to the body. And so I go at the, to the unconscious level and look at unconscious and subconscious conditioning from the collective imprints from the parents, traumas, whether it's sexual abuse, or mm-hmm. honestly, if a chakra is the intersection of mind, body, and spirit through the spirit component, I can access past life and karmic stuff. So maybe somebody was sexually um, abused. And I just did a session with one of my masterminders who's a vibrational upgrade practitioner herself last night. Uh, with a a sexual abuse trauma in another lifetime. So maybe you also have the conclusion if you were like Galileo and you saw some truth and you spoke out and the authorities and powers that be weren't ready for your riveting paradigm changing recognition or Copernicus where the earth is round and not Mm -hmm. flat and you're instead ostracized or jailed in the tower Mm -hmm. or hung or, you know, guillotined, Mm -hmm. you might come into this life with the idea of, I don't like being all the way down there in the root, the tailbone, the legs. Yeah. Let me just hover above my head. And then what happens is people will be really in their comfort zone using the intellect and they'll be really heady. So there's all these deferral unconscious patterns that we're in the midst of clearing out. And if you don't seek it proactively, what I have seen is people get forced to. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm over here smiling at so many things you said, first of all, because I went to Tulum in February and I, it was for a friend's birthday and I had this, like, it just came in and it was like, Tara, your conscious mind is not going to understand why you need to be in that energy, but it's, it's intentional and purposeful that you need to be there. And when I was there, I, I had this moment. I was, um, I love to get in the ocean and I was right at the ruins and I was in the ocean and I turned around and I looked and there was like a shaman's house. They told us it was a shaman's house and I could see it from um, where I was in the ocean. Part and the ruins? Uh, this was the ruins. This was not Chichen Itza. It was the ruins by Tulum. But the shaman's house was the one in the Tulum one, ruins. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and, and I could see it. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I could see it where I was in the ocean and I just had this like, Whew, very clear. It was just like, what makes you think that you guys are more advanced than they were? <laughs> That's what I heard. And it was like, um, no, no different, different focuses. Uh, you're not, you have not you know, more advanced in, in all the ways. And it was really a moment for me. I also studied Spanish as a, I have a degree in Spanish. I'm very connected. Good time, yeah. I'm smiling because I'm creating a program, a year long program right now, all based in Mexican indigenous teachings and animal totems and all of this. So I'm just laughing yeah. hearing you say this. Yeah. Um, my next question, I just have to, uh, I'm being selfish and personally, what, what is it? Why were you saying that you talk about tinnitus? So, um, my first major in college was psychology after three semesters. I left it because I saw it was answering the question, how do we be the most thriving, mm-hmm. uh, joyous versions of ourselves living up to our potential. And ever since then, I've been looking to the answer to that question. And so, um, I've been looking more to the holistic realm. And so, in psychology, I ended up teaching AP psych in the classroom, actually, the international school system. We have our five physical senses as psych 101 teaches, and they're given threšholds, our sight, our vision, our he- pardon me, our sight, our hearing, our taste, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Because there are actually so there is actually so much multidimensional or metaphysical, meta meaning bigger than beyond the physical data that our five senses could be picking up that if we didn't have these thresholds closing it down, we would go nuts. So it's a protective mechanism. However, when you engage in the practice of, for example, one of the outcomes of meditation is these thresholds, when it's safe, when you've done enough Mm -hmm. expansion work of your consciousness, open a little bit. And so part of that opening is showing up in the spiritual awakening times with the vibrational backdrop we're now living in, as I can hear a bit more clear audiently. So Mm -hmm. it shows up for a lot of people as tinnitus. (laughs) In yeah, just have I just have that going on too. So that's why I had to ask. You're going through an awakening. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and speaking of, um, this, you know, uh, breakdown of your current ego structures that you built in your life. I mean, I'm just laughing because that's my audience knows this or if you're new, welcome, you know, to my, (laughs) my spiritual awakening. But, um, you know, uh, I was raised Mormon, very LDS, very much plugged into the matrix, had a really hard home life. So it was like safety, safety fit in the box. This will keep me safe. Built, you know, got married, had four kids, the big yard with the boat and the, you know, middle class class neighborhood. Yep. Yeah, you are messing and, around. <laughs> and I, yeah, yep. We had our 401k and we had our life insurance and we had our whole life put together, except it wasn't me at all. It was just me like, go, like a, like a doll with strings, just doing what I was told to do my whole life. And the reason health and fitness is so important to me is because it led to, I feel like once my body got cleaned out and got healthier, I woke up and I just started questioning everything and I lost everything. I walked away from my entire community. When I left Mormonism, I was a leader in it lost. I was ostracized. I was publicly, you know, it was, it was a big deal. Um, and I got divorced three months later and I started my life from scratch. I was like a caterpillar and a cocoon that just dissolved the current life that I had. And I'm so grateful for it because from that place I rebuilt from spirit, I rebuilt from spiritual connection. And for me, plant medicines were really helpful tool and breaking all these old paradigm, all these, um, uh, mental patterns that I was in and being able to connect to that. Um, and so, yeah, that's where I find myself now. And that's, you know, that was six years ago. So I've, I'm, I'm leaning, learning to trust it more and more. Like I, I really am learning to live by it, but (laughs) I shouldn't say, but, but it's, um, I, I actually recently, I went to Joshua tree, California recently, and I'm actually going out again because the thing with my hands, I went to giant rock out there and it just, it got so intense that it literally, I couldn't even focus on dinner that night. Cause I'm like, <laughs> like, how can I look at my friends? Like, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. I'm like going through something right now. Like, I feel like my, it was, it's not painful. Isn't the right word, but it was just so intense. And so help you. yeah, thanks. <laughs> this book is uh, the Dragon Master Creatrix Conversations with a Female Spiritual Teacher for these new times. Mm. If you all go to the dragonmastercreatrix.com, you can go ahead and get free gifts from buying this book. Nice. Put in, I would in your, get it. Put in your, so you have to do Allison, what's my name? You have to do Allison JK because it's an Allison K that doesn't write about what I write about at all. Oh, okay. Good to know. <laughs> the middle initial J. The Dragon Master Creatrix, or it might be dragonmastercreatrix.com. If you go, I'll talk about the book in a second, but if you go to that website, um, it's mine and there's free gifts. One of them is a month membership in Activate Your Magic, which is my Ooh. cheapest, least investment toe in the water taster. Mm-hmm. And you get each, um, there's two live events per month where I'm clearing out the old paradigm or the old mental conditioning mm-hmm. or at whatever the source is. And then there's a full moon, um, new moon, sacred activations nice. that you get, which is a $97 value. But then you also get three videos. One of them is when I'm in a stone circle in, um, Ireland in the stone circle has been historically used for abundance and harvest celebrations. And so I activate those energies and more, much more in that video. That video is a long one where there's a lot of mm-hmm. energy medicine clearings and activations done. Two other videos, one is, they're both from Teotihuacan outside of Mexico City. Nice. And one is on top of the pyramid of the sun. Oh no. Energy medicine. And the other video is ah. on the pyramid of the moon. Sending ah. energy medicine to help you balance your yin and yang. Cool. So you, get, you get all of that. And I, I, that's like worth a couple of hundred dollars overall uh-huh. um, from buying the book and then going to dragonmastercreatrix.com and entering the info about your receipt. Um, so I say all of this because I take you just brought up a lot. You brought up not only your opening in your hands, but the earth and what's happening in your interchange. And you brought up uh, plant medicine. So plant medicine, I, I came back to the States and ayahuasca was gr- gr- growing bigger yeah. as, a, as a means for people to have an opening. And it's cool. It's hip. It's trendy. Yeah, yeah. With indigenous people. Right. I'll tell you what though, I don't need anything and neither do my masterminds. People have been working with me for longer than three months because um, it, it's a permabuzz that we're on. And so 
where to start. So where to start is in this book, I'm talking about, um, it's written from my student's perspective and she's meeting me like my students do from all over the world in Glastonbury, United Kingdom. And mm-hmm. we're getting trained to be vibrational upgrade practitioners using my system. And they're getting these high level Tibetan attunements, really sacred. And they're um, being taken to different sacred sp- sites and power spots and stone circles. Wow. Wow. So, all, so that's known as the heart chakra of the planet. So the, it, there's all these sacred spots in and of themselves mm-hmm. there on the land. And they are first retreat, first level shown how to energy flows within their own system, a human system. And they're attuned that opens up their hands because the arms and the hands are related to the heart chakra. Mm-hmm. So first they're working on themselves. Level one allows them to treat themselves. And then level two allows them to go treat others. And then the third, Mm -hmm. the next level, the next retreat where they would come Mm -hmm. is then they're able to attune others, but they're also starting to step into their own self mastery more Mm -hmm. where it's, where it's more the meaning of the word yoga, which means to yoke with our higher selves and then above our higher selves is the divine. So these openings that get created by these attunements are exactly what ayahuasca does and a whole hell of a lot more. Mm -hmm. Um, And so there's a permanent cell tower, so to speak, calling the light down onto you Mm -hmm. from these attunements. Mm -hmm. So they're also being taken increasingly to learn how to read the land's energy because the land has a version of chakras and ley lines Mm -hmm. and they're taught where the energy and how the energy flows both in relationship to based on what they've learned about a human body, a human system, how energy, Mm -hmm. subtle energy flows through the system or vital life force energy, which keeps us alive and spirited and Mm -hmm. all these Mm -hmm. um, which is called chi and qigong, which I'm also a teacher of or prana yoga. Okay. So vital life force Mm -hmm. energy is how we translate it. Key Mm -hmm. for those of you who know Reiki. So, and Reiki was the first of my five energy medicine modalities. So Mm -hmm. then at the third retreat, they're taken out, to work with stone circles and help send energy out to the collective and to the earth. And at the fourth level, they're learning how to work with trees and beyond the stones and elementals and, and, and all of the earth's mm. energies for the health of the earth, the earth. Mm. Is awa- so the earth is awakening right now as well. So with post COVID, I notice more animals, you know, there's more yeah, bears yeah. are back in Florida, which is phenomenal black bears. Um, so not just the yellow diamond signs talking about watch out deer next five miles, which I'm used to, and we're used to down there in the Gulf of Mexico, but now uh, black bear signs. So there's the earth is awakening and she is, has been like in old, I, I started all of this like in nine at 19 with uh, medicine wheel ceremonies with native yeah. Americans. And they talk about, um, like in not just those ceremonies, but like with goddessy kinds of ceremonies where they'll talk about, let all the negativity release down through your feet into the earth and let the earth take it. Have you heard of that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what I understand is the earth is conscious. Everything has consciousness. Um, And this is now going to like the traditional Chinese medicine perspective and the yogic perspective and the quantum physics perspective. So if everything has consciousness, that means if we are throwing our negativity, asking the earth to facilitate it, we'll look at what she's had to put up with. You know, there's Mm -hmm. unexpected flooding, all of the stuff Mm -hmm. with the global warming is happening. So we are not separate from the earth. So our mayhem uncleared creates the earth's mayhem that we then, it's a feedback loop. Right, right. So in this awakening time, you're asking, and, and, and Tara, I'm going to give you this. I don't normally do this with a uh, show host, but I'm just going for it with you. Yeah, we're, we're it just you guys get like, to listen to our private conversation. Just <laughs> it, it is that way in a way, though. I, I, I yeah. don't, and I teach my students not to this. Like, you don't ever walk up in a store and say, I'm getting this about you. Like, it's just that's yeah. BS. Like, it's just unprofessional. One of my mis- main mission, I have two main parts of my mission. The first one is, wow, if people in the West, particularly the States, only knew about how to work with their consciousness and their subtle energy system and how much easier it would be rather than pounding it out from the mind. Yeah. yeah. So then everybody would thrive a whole lot more and there'd be a whole lot less suffering. That's mission yeah. number one. Mission number yeah. two is to professionalize the field of energy medicine. I don't even call myself a healer. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I see using energy medicine and the understanding of how our consciousness works and our subtle energy system works as a way to reach our full human potential. So 
nonetheless, when you were talking about what you did with as a Mormon leader in the community and leaving that, it was hitting me in the face to help you with your own path because you've kind of opened up to that. I'm going to give you that. You've done that before. Yeah. You've, you've stepped up and said yeah. no and, and walked away before. But this time it's different because this time it isn't about the ostracization or the rejection. Instead, it's about the empowerment and then modeling it for others. Mm -hmm. You said something else that was really important that I really want to share with you because I feel like it'll help you have more reason to celebrate. Yeah, you please. Know? Because yeah. of the choices, the courage it's taken, the mm -hmm. steel cojones it's taken to do what you've done. <laughs> um, and that is following your guidance. I've done this my whole life. I grew up like walking with my older brother in the woods after school and just felt connected to everything. Teens, right writing in a journal. So I always have let in the higher guidance and like a few times, my late teens and early twenties, I didn't listen. And in the mayhem ensued, yeah. and I was like, okay, yeah. Yeah, listen. Right. I've learned yeah. that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but, that broke, but, but I also had to rebel against my, my parents because they were very beautiful, great foundation. So loving and wanted a certain life path for me. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. wasn't what I felt for myself, mm -hmm. even though my mom was the one who said, Alison, wow, you seem to be really natural with people like around 12 or 13. Why don't you mm -hmm. go into psychology? And mm -hmm. intuitively, I was like, well, mom, that makes sense. I trust your intuition too. Okay. That's what led to that. So mm -hmm. I didn't rebel against everything, but I needed to have my guidance be what led my life, not my parents' projections right. of what society deems worthy. And um, mm -hmm. so what I'm saying is, is that our consciousness about 10% of the, so we make daily choices. We don't hear them. We only hear about 10% of the thoughts that are actually making choices. Like I'm going to eat this now. I'm going to eat that now. I'm going to go here now. 90% mm -hmm. ish. And I see it actually higher than that. I mm -hmm. quoted my third book, reasonable dragons as 85%, but from all of the tens of thousands of people I've worked with over the mm -hmm. years, I see it as like 95% of our consciousness creates our roboticism, which is what you talked about. You were living robotically according totally. to what others. So right. where we do that, it's because like, you know, when you learn to drive and you first have to say, put uh, get a car in neutral, uh, not neutral, but reverse or drive, put yeah. foot on brake, put foot on gas. And then yeah. we don't say it any longer after we've gotten right. it mastered. So that goes into the subconscious. Right. Trauma is because our ego minds can't feel the trauma because it's traumatizing. It goes into the subconscious as a way mm -hmm. of protection. And then what happens is we have unconscious conclusions. Let's say it's sexual abuse. We have what's called free floating thoughts of the ensuing unconscious conclusions of I have to dress down because I'm too much. Men will rape me if right. I don't. Right. So then that might lead to a woman who we see as dowdy or who we see as yeah. hiding or right. right? Okay. Yeah, so 90% of our lives is ruled by what we're not hearing right. consciously. Right. So right. it behooves us then therefore, and this is all the work that vibration upgrade system that I created and that I spent all my time doing is to clear this out because it, this brings it into the body too you said you had to detoxify your body. And so when we work through the chakra columns, and I don't mean a five minute sound healing with a crystal bowl for the seventh chakra on YouTube, there is, this is a science and it takes me like so long to teach it when it's approached the right way. It's not simply balancing your chakras five minutes a day. If it's a chakra means wheel and it's the intersection of the mind, the body and the spirit, we have seven main ones in our body. If they're blocked, they don't turn the vital life force energy to that hormonal gland, like the thyroid at the throat mm -hmm. chakra, to that musculature, like the neck and the upper shoulders and to the mind. So the throat chakra at the first level is communication. I'm going to leave that aside because it's relatively well-known. What I have seen since about 20 uh, 1415. And I wrote about it in my second book, vibration upgrade, a conspiracy for your bliss, because I see the system designed as for our bliss. If we know how to work it. Mm. Second level is about where we courage is here. Creativity is here. I don't mean macrame or arts and crafts. I mean like the choice after choice of creating our lives from. So courage and creativity and making our choices comes from here. So for example, if we feel limited and we don't have any choice, our necks get tight. We might have a thyroid problem. Mm -hmm. So Mind, body, and spirit. So body also, this runs the, uh, every endocrine gland is um, connected to a major 
uh, chakra and the biggest nerve plexes of neuroreceptors that receive messaging from the brain are where each chakra is. So it's both communication systems, electrical, central nervous system, and chemical hormonal system. So when I say body, I don't mean just the musculature. So for right. example, I got hit, I was on a scooter driving in Taiwan by a drunk driver. I got thrown up in the air, circling three times before landed head top onto the ground. Doctors said most people would be dead or have been uh, paraplegic from this, but because I had healthy chakras and musculature from being a personal trainer and bodybuilder, but because this was so buoyant, the vital life force energy cushioned from the impact. So two people can be hit with the same, same car, same impact, same posture. One could end up with whiplash and one, because they have an open throat chakra acts as a buoyancy. So they don't. Hmm. So it does, chakras are responsible for so much more. So in the mind, body, and spirit intersection, I've already mentioned about the spirit, the mind, I've already mentioned the different levels of consciousness. Sub means under the conscious mind, unconscious, un means not, so not conscious, and then the conscious mind. So, so those hmm. are the three levels of the mind. So mind, body, and spirit, they intersect here. But then there's like, if you think of the chakras as an urban center, there are roads and paths that lead side routes, interstates, um, state roads. There's all these smaller pathways that all feed into these centers. Mm -hmm. So our whole body is interconnected. The point being is that the more clearing we do on the back of the house consciousness, it will release a trauma or blocked energy down, let's say in the hips. Yeah. Or down around the digestive system, depending on the content of the trauma, it goes to the relevant chakra. So if it's sexual abuse, it goes to the sacral mm -hmm. uh, the root. If it's um, feeling like if it's low self-worth because of parental imprints and traumas, then it would go to the third chakra. So that would affect the digestive system. So maybe the person's anxious a lot and they have a flabby belly. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying all this because when you said you had to detox your body, doing this clearing work does that and elevates your entire vibration. And once you're at a certain point, then the energy can start to flow. So you're, you've cleared enough. So now you're feeling yeah. more flow. Yeah. And I, uh, man, just, it's funny hearing you talk about ayahuasca. So I've had a few guests talk about ayahuasca. I've done ayahuasca. Um, and I having done many years of plant medicines and I am like, this is like telling someone who's never meditated before that they should go to a Vipassana retreat. You know, um, that's what I feel like, like the entry point of, consciousness exploration and plant medicines being ayahuasca. I, I try to tell everyone I know, I'm like, I wouldn't start there. I, that, that is like gangster level. Like you're not even going to be able to understand what is happening to you. It might even be traumatic in my opinion. So it's not my favorite place for, to start, but you know, I had many years before that, but what I'm interested, I'm interested in that you landed so much on that throat chakra because I was just processing a, a really severe trauma when I, so after I had my big awakening and I went through all this scary stuff and left Mormonism and got divorced with four kids was so traumatic. And I was a part-time personal trainer at a box gym at the time after having been a stay at home mom for a decade. So it was like very scary uh, time, Yeah, but I, but I, you know, I hadn't done any work, no healing at all. I was like, yeah, I got this, you know, <laughs> and I landed myself a, literally a, a psychopath, like a very controlling, manipulative narcissist. Like it was extreme levels of manipulation and actually using plant medicines to manipulate me. I lost everything I had. I even lost, I mean, I, I went through a bankruptcy. I lost my car. I had to ask my ex-husband to take my kids for a while. So it was just like, I mean, I had hit rock bottom and that during that time, I was like, I'm never doing plant medicines again, because that is what led me into that. Cause I got mind controlled from them. And so I was super anti except for ayahuasca because it called my heart so hard and couldn't believe it. Within a couple of months, my friend who I was working for at the time was invited to an ayahuasca retreat center that I had dreamed of going to. I was on their email list and I'm like, you have to go. And he was just like, Oh, do you want to see if you can come too as my assistant? I'm like, I'm in the middle of financial devastation. Right. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, just this miracle was gifted that, that, that trip. And actually breath work was actually, I would say more emotionally processing for me, the medicine itself had benefits, but the emotional processing of that trauma came through the breath work and actually the yoga. Um, we had some big hip openers and I was just processing all of the stuff. And she's like, you might start feeling emotional. I'm sitting there bawling snots going everywhere. I'm like, wow. So I learned the different benefits benefits of all these different modalities. But one thing that, you know, I, I actually, I, I don't, I haven't really processed it. I don't really have an answer for it, but 
when I was thinking of at one point during the actual ayahuasca ceremony, I was processing this guy that I had been in that relationship with for a year and a half. And every time I would think about him, I literally felt like someone was choking me, like choking me at my throat. And it was an intro. I was like, it was so tight, you know? And so anyway, it's just interesting to me that you're saying that. Cause I'm going back to kind of the hands thing and all this stuff that's happening to me. I've, I've been feeling from my guides or teachers. I, I don't know who they are. It feels like a, they, and, um, it, it's, I keep hearing it's okay that you're, um, like kind of having a hard time accepting what's happening to you, but the sooner you can let that go, the better life can get faster. You know, like if you can let go of this programming of that's weird and I reject it and all of that. So anyway, it's just, I think for me, I, I, I'm definitely in the middle of this journey. I've, I have some spiritual teachers, but I'm excited. I'm, I'm actually excited about your. I want to explore that course you're talking about with your book for sure, especially because you're on the sun and moon pyramids and freaking Mexico city, which is where I'm doing all my research for my program right now. I'm actually headed to Oaxaca next month oh, um, cool. for this. And I'm, you know, got connected to it. ruins there. Yeah. I got connected to a beautiful healer there. I'm going back out to Joshua tree to do a journey out there. Um, solo by myself to explore this energy. And a lot of it, what I've been being told on my last journey, we were talking about this co-creative energy creation energy has been a huge yeah. theme coming through for me right now. And then a really powerful journey I had recently for some reason I asked, I don't even know why I asked it. Um, I asked if I could be in creation energy was my question. And I started going through this series of body stuff, like as if I was on ayahuasca, but I was just on mushrooms. And I, what I heard was, um, yes, we're going to have to do some work on your nervous system <laughs> first. And so that's what I feel. I purge. I was like vomit. I felt like I was vomiting and giving birth to energy at the same time. That's how much was just like coming out of me. And after I walked away from that experience, which was only about less than two months ago, I felt like I walked back into, you're talking about reintegrating with American life. I felt like I came back from that journey, like I had completely different person who walked into somebody's shit show of a sympathetic nervous system lifestyle. And I was like, no more, no more not doing it anymore. And so the last couple of months have been, you know, I just hired a coach and I'm really working into being more in this creation energy, which brings so much peace and ease. And as I've been leaning into it, it's, I'm attracting stuff like crazy. It's just dropping in ease, ease, ease. Mm -hmm. And, um, the coach I hired, he's, he's got me, he was a previous guest, um, guys as Jared Hanning, um, is not doing, not being in the energy of doing, cause that's a fight or flight reaction is just stimulus do stimulus act, you know? And so I'm really stepping back into bringing in and attracting. And it's, it's honestly like I am, I'm going through something right now and it's really powerful. So, um, anyway, I appreciate your counsel on that. And I was wondering, do you have any insights on the, you know, how I was feeling my throat chakra just cause I, I definitely was not exercising my voice. I mean, that was, uh, the healing I've been through was, uh, a Catherine Dixon, who's a, she does the work of Byron Katie and is very tapped in <laughs> and beautiful soul. Um, she really helped me, you know, well, when he wanted you to do X, how did you feel in your body? Oh, clammed up. How did you feel? Oh, I don't want to do this. What am I doing? Ugh. And she's like, did you tell him? <laughs> and I'm like, no. So let's like, go one step beyond that. Let's go sure. in, in, in Tara. This is, I, I, I'm glad that you have hired a coach. When you're done with him, come to me. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> uh, honestly, I'm known as like the finishing school. Like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I love. I mean, you've you've really put in so much, not only in your own spiritual practice, but educating on how to actually achieve these outcomes. I mean, it's incredible. So yeah, <laughs> I'm looking at you, kind of fascinated because it's a, it's brilliant that you already see that. It says a lot about you. I mean, I was the last retreats, they had to be virtual. And, um, a couple of my practitioners were practicing their workshop. Cause it's like a business in a box. I set people up with after the attunement, mm -hmm. the training. And both of them, these two were talking about how they had found law of attraction or mm -hmm. something like Byron Katie, or even Joe mm -hmm. Dispenza. Yeah. God bless all of these people who are right. out there, um, helping people raise their consciousness and get in their mm -hmm. body. Um, yeah. but I was the one who showed them the how. Yeah, I was, I was the one that that be, went beyond the concepts. Um, and I'm not saying that that wonderful practitioner who helped with the sacral openings. I mean, she knew what she was doing because she focused on the sacral and that was that's the emotional body. And that's great. Mm -hmm. um, 
So every yoga pose is designed. Like when I was in India, we had to design our uh, yoga sequence based on each chakra opening. Um, that's what every yoga pose is. It's not, and that's, and you're giving a great example of, you know, how like I even, I was talking to my, one of my brothers about this yesterday, the one who lives up here where I am visiting about how it's hard to go to a restorative yoga class, but it's because your mind wants you to go to a vinyasa flow or a power yeah. yoga. Yeah. 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 And my training is Ashtanga, which is the most athletic version, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that yin that you were talking about, like learning how to receive and learning how to not be in the doing, those, mm -hmm. those are great concepts. And, and yet I find there is processes I can do in your system that activate, that I know I've been taught in my second energy medicine right. modality to balance the central nervous system, mm -hmm. to activate somebody's parasympathetic nervous system. Mm -hmm. And it, I can do it in five or 10 minutes and you're there. So yeah. while there's these concepts, right. I'm, I'm also bringing in clearings of like where your right. conditioning is that the doing accomplishes more that you right. prove your success by the more right. doing you do, right. you know, so that it's easier and you don't have to do so much breakthrough work on yourself or deal with so much negative thinking or so much self-talk and so much will force right. to rediscipline yourself. But instead it's, it's just much more yes. graceful. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 I, I I've had glimpses of what you're talking about from journeys where I just, I'm like, Oh, I don't see it like that anymore. <laughs> and it, when you're already in the new space, yeah. everything else, just like you're saying, you know, everything comes from the subconscious. So all your actions change when you're energetically in a different space, you know? So I, and so the choice. And so when you come from the yeah. unconscious and, uh, or subconscious, you're not consciously making choices. Right. Yeah. But when, when we clear out that you're back to the house consciousness, as I've come to call it, you have more access to the conscious presence. You're more conscious, your choices yeah. therefore become more conscious. So I don't see it just as were you telling him? No. I, when you, your throat chakra is tight with him, I see it as it's the second level. Like you weren't, you were being asked to step, you had just stepped into your, more of your power. Yeah. Now here you were with another challenge to, right. and I see this all the time <laughs> historically. So I've been doing this work for over 20 years. And every time I want to say almost every time to be, to be conservative, but I really believe it's every time somebody <laughs> has a foundational shift and really changes the, it's almost like the momentum that had been gotten mm -hmm. not English for that old pattern, another opportunity to be yeah. that old way is presented. Yeah. 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 My, my co-host on my other podcast, she, she says the universe always sends you a ringer to see if you learned your lesson, <laughs> yeah, but, but, but we can, we can phrase it that way. And I have been guilty of that because, <laughs> I'm using the word guilty because, because I even see karma as like not a punishment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, like I don't, I don't agree with, we've been everything. So I may be the rapey and the raper, you know, I don't agree with that. I believe that we have these, what are called some scars and the yogic teaching that our soul is meant to evolve beyond. And it's one and two sticking points that no matter where you go, what relationship you're in, what job you're in, you're still faced with that aspect of yourself. You would prefer to move beyond, right? So that's what we're here to do is to evolve beyond that. So when you were in that position with him, your throat was tight because you were being asked to evolve beyond that old disempowerment and not just speak up for yourself, but choose the empowering choice, which is to go like this to him. Right. Right. Well, she was, that was the middle finger. If you're listening on audio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to switch gears real quick. Cause I want to talk about your book a little bit more. Um, first of all, I want to know why you titled it the way that you did. <laughs> so the third level of um, certification with me is dragon master. And the fourth level is grand dragon master. And why? Because the dragons to so the original, the ley lines are known as um, Lung Bay in Chinese, I believe, and or Lung Mei, not Bay. Um, dragon lines were what the ley lines were originally called. And dragons, if you think of feng shui, like in um, China and Taiwan, they won't, won't build like they'll build their roofs, roofs a certain way so that the light goes the, the the energy that travels naturally in the earth's grid of mm -hmm. the ley lines doesn't get disrupted by a structure. So whether that's inside your house, like feng shui, wow. or the, where the house is positioned itself. Wow. So dragons do a lot of great work with, um, how do I say this? I'm going to just say it. So dragons do a lot of great work with their fire to consume dense energies. Whereas like archangels are really high. And I know even when I've been in a session and I've mm -hmm. been like, somebody has just lost someone they love and they want to talk to the person. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I have to go to a different, I have to go higher to even access that. But when I'm, when I'm accessing angelic level of guidance, and I like how you said they, because I don't ever specify that when I'm increasingly opening my students' uh, intuition, the further they go in working with me, I don't go. I mean, you can already access the Akashic records. So I don't even specify the Akashic records because I take them beyond there. And it's not about like naming who it is or what it is. Just call it your team. Fine. You know, yeah. you don't have to even yeah. get so specific as guides, archangels, angels, goddesses. Go- so uh, as mm-hmm. long as it's a trustworthy voice that you know in your heart, you've seen from practice yeah. trust, and it's not the erratic ego mind yeah. it's in mayhem, then there is unconditional love all around us. And every cell subatomically, I, t- I end my second book saying this after working anyway, leave it there. Unconditional love is all around us and life is happening for us, not to us. So there are loving forces that want to help guide yeah. us into this yeah. new. So um, the dragons with their fiery breath can consume denser energies where the archangels are higher. So I've had to go higher and I can only, I've noticed I can only sustain that channeling of a higher vibratory being um, for so long until I get kind of like, I got to come out of this. I got to come back into my body much more. Mm -hmm. And then I have to go out and do more grounding. So Mm -hmm. angels go higher, dragons can go lower. So they're taught how to use the dragons in order to consume the denser energy on behalf of the collective and on behalf of helping the earth. Wow. This is so interesting to me for so many reasons. One is I had this very synchronistic meeting of a woman. I mean, this was really quite crazy. I I'll share real quick. I don't want to take the mic away from you, but just to kind of, you know, bring my audience along, I guess. Yeah, go Um, for it. I was, um, texting, (laughs) I was texting someone about a, a potential healing journey and walking around the lake by my house. And these two like young guys, like I'm, I'm pushing 40 and they're like, you could tell early twenties or something. They're like, Hey, can we walk with you? And normally I'd be like, Um, (laughs) I could practically be your mom and like, no, (laughs) but I was just, for some reason it was like, yep, let's go for a walk. Like it was an adventure, you know? And, and I, as like within 30 seconds, one of them is like, you know, I'm like, what do you guys do for a living? And he's like, oh, I work with the, oh gosh, what's the name of that machine? Um, it's a machine that energy healers use. I'd never heard of it before. Now I can't remember the name. I think it starts with an R. Um, it like sends, uh, different pulses impulses. Yeah. I know Uh, there's a bunch of different ones. Don't worry about it. I cannot remember what it was called. Anyway, I'd never heard of it before. Um, turns out he has this big Facebook group and it's this thing. So I looked into it and I was like, huh, it's interesting. He was saying it can, he's like, it can kind of induce similar to a, a medicine, plant medicine experience, which they knew nothing about me. So I just thought that was so fascinating, especially because I was just texting someone about it. Well, like, a week later, maybe two weeks later, a friend of mine was visiting from out of state and was like, Hey, I got invited to a party in Utah. Do you want to go? And I'm like, you got invited to a party here. (laughs) And he's like, yeah. And I was like, what city is it in? And he said, South Jordan, which is the city I live in. So I was like, wow, that's really crazy. We should go to this party. We get to the party and there's a woman there and she has like a limp and she's young, you know, and I'm like talking to her about it. And I'm telling her about some, you know, different healing modality, like, you know, health specialists. I know that she might want to look into. She's like, come into my living room. I want to, Oh no, she didn't say come. She's like, come in here. Let me get away from the noise. We go in and I see this room and it's got like a copper pyramid and it's got all these ancient <laughs> artifacts and it's got all this cool stuff. And I'm like, whose house is this? And she's like, oh, this is my house. I'm like, oh, she's like, yeah, this is my room. And I do energy healing and blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's called a Rife machine. And she had, a, she's like, this is my Rife machine. And I'm like, oh my God, I just heard about that like a week ago. And she's like, yeah, you should come to a session. And so we did it. And basically what she does is she, I guess, can see spirit guides. And she is it, really fascinating. She has like the Cowper pyramid in that room. And then she has another one in her bedroom and she dictates on her phone to something that prints out on her computer from the other room. But she says she can see through this pyramid while you lay on this like chakra mat with infrared that goes through it and all this stuff. And I'm just like, okay, let's see what happens, you know, <laughs> like open to anything. Um, and some of the stuff that she said was like, she told me that I had a green dragon that was with me at all times. And there was some archangel. And this is like, I, I am like, I don't know. I have no context for any of this, you know? So I'm just like, okay, I have a green dragon, you know? <laughs> and I was kind of like, all right, you know? And I just literally kind of just like put it on the shelf and was like, thanks. That was interesting. Um, but what I'm hearing you say is so it, it, it um, uh, companions too. It, it resonates with me. What you said about 
it kind of almost, it doesn't really matter like who and what, as long as you trust the voice that's guiding you, because I have really learned that I have had some really hard, hard ass lessons on not listening to that and seeing the, what happens enough times and had enough awesome magic happen when I do listen to it, that I know that yeah. guidance and I trust it. And so I, I'm, I'm sharing that because, um, you know, I've learned that a lot we are, our, our, um, little, our minds are, we want to know and understand everything exactly. And I think by design, part of our existence here is to not have all the answers. I think we do. I think we are, that's my per, personal opinion. I think we are conscious beings that know everything. And I think by design, this forgetfulness that we experience is to enhance whatever the purpose of this experiment, this experience is, whether it's learning or growth or bringing back energy and information into the divine. But I've learned so many times that like, when we have to know all the little minute details of how it all works and all that, we get lost in it and we miss the path. <laughs> and it's like, really, I like what you're saying because it's like, really all that matters is that we trust and listen to that voice that we know is guiding us. And if we just keep doing that, at least for me, it's just been magic, magic, magic. Like, well, I was listening to my guidance, making sure you heard that. Cause I, I caught it all when you first brought it in that you needed to hear the reinforcement of, I don't know who it is. I just call them. They, cause I know it's more than one. And yeah. it, does, it does feel like that. Yeah. Um, but I, I want to stress for the listeners, it, it, there's a distinction. And I know that this is a very beginning level. And I spent a lot of time like around 2016 talking about this more. Um, mm -hmm. There's a distinction that people in the beginning stages of learning to listen to their intuition go through. And it's like, is, am I making this up? Am I yeah. imagining right. this? And right. so you, what you can do is what you heard Tara just talk about is look at, I mean, use reason and logic. And I talk about my third book is called Reasonable Dragons, where in the subtitle is where what is it? Uh, where log logical magic becomes the new norm and you're connected to the field of unlimited possibilities. And so I talk about logical magic. It seems like it's not illogical. It's just a divine sense of logic. So there's a higher order logic. Mm, love that. So, thanks. And it, that's what I've come to see. Like, it's still logical. It's just at a much yeah. higher elevated perspective. Ooh, divine logic. That is, ah, I love that. I love that because <laughs> I've oh. learned the difference between like, like my trip to upcoming trip to Joshua tree. That was a, it popped in my psyche at least 20 times. Like go huh? out there, go out there. Do you remember? Go out there. Remember, go out there. Remember, go out there. You know, <laughs> I was like, I know that it, it, it doesn't quite seem super logical. There's no, like, it's like, right. I don't know what's going to happen. All I know is I trust this divine logic right. you're talking about. And every time I have, it's just like unbelievable what comes from it. It's, no, you know. it's how we, it's how we live. So if the nature of the ego mind is based on the old, I go to Asia, I find a fruit. I don't recognize it. My ego mind from my visual senses goes into now the next step, their labeling of what I'm perceiving through my five senses. Mm -hmm. And it looks through data files mm -hmm. of only what I know. Right. It can't go find files of what I don't yet know. Right. So what it does is it looks at this fruit and it says, hmm, that looks like what I do know as a peer. I'm also in Asia. Let's call it Asian peer. <laughs> so we can't, we can't use the mind to access the new. Right. To go beyond where we have been living at the levels of our finances, our relationships, our health, our well-being, our spirituality, in our or our spiritual path, however you call it, to access the new to move beyond old points. We have to trust in something other than that part of us that wants to know steps one through five. I want a timeline. I want to know how I'm going to implement the timeline. And I want to, that nasally whiny voice that demands um, from a structure and a sense of um, I, I almost like I need it proven or I need it proven that it's likely to work or else I'm not right. going to trust this voice because what are you bloody a fucking asking me to do? Yeah. You know, so yeah. there's this um, distrust that has to get, it, you can expect resistance right. when you hear the guidance to expect right. yourself to jump in. I mean, I do nowadays because I know, yeah. you know, but in the stages of developing intuitive musculature, first right. it's being able to observe, like when I've made choices to listen from listening to this voice and it's not that you're schizophrenic 
when I've made choices to listening to this voice that's popping in, telling me to go to Joshua Tree, I know the texture or the tone of this voice. It's familiar. And when I've made choices from it before, it's always resulted in more magic in my life. Right. Versus when I've heard this, felt this tone, this texture, and I said nasally, like nah, 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 whining. When I've listened to this voice, don't do it or, or eat that or go meet him. And I've listened to it. Disasters have ensued. So just use that level of logic right. and observation to right. know and distinguish for yourself the voices. And from there, you practice making choices from that mm-hmm. guidance and mm-hmm. you develop more and more musculature that eventually leads to an entirely different existence. That is that is excellent counsel. I think, you know, you mentioned you're not schizophrenic. That has been a resistance point for me because my mom is schizophrenic and that has been she's as intuitive as you are. And she just didn't have the people to help her around her. Yet she had severe trauma as a child. Her, her parents were a murder suicide when she was five years old. Um, it's uh, sorry, we'll cut out real quick. It's one thirty-two. So you're still good. Correct. Okay. Um, well, I go. Oh, you do. Oh, I have a client right at the, at the, hour. Okay. Yeah. Oh, 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 I thought it was, sorry. I thought it was the next one. Okay. Sorry. We'll go ahead and wrap up. Okay. <laughs> we put that out. <laughs> hey guys, we are, are going to have to wrap it up. Um, and, and in a nutshell, if you guys want any of the resources that Dr. Allison spoke about, we'll put those all in the show notes. So, um, uh, hopefully maybe until next time, thank you so much, Dr. Allison for visiting, visiting the podcast today and kind of taking me through my own coaching session. Thanks everybody for <laughs> listening in.